Okay, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to another Sunday service of Christ Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Ferguson, and it's good to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. Amen. Today I'm going to be speaking to you uh, about the conscience. So this will be part two of last week where I spoke on it. And uh, I'm going to go a little deeper this time uh, and look at the Greek word and a couple other Greek words and um, try to unravel uh, and depict this uh, thing called the conscience. You know, the conscience is where we live, it's who we are, and we make decisions uh, with the conscience. Uh, it's a gift from God. And uh, it needs to be understood and obeyed uh, when it is being properly led uh, by the Word of God. Uh, so before we get started, we'll go to God in a word of prayer as always, and then we'll get started. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come unto you this day in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you and love you for who you are. Thank you for saving us, Lord, and giving us everlasting life in Christ. Uh, God, we pray you will strengthen uh, the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. You will lift us up and cause us to uh, be diligent in our pursuit of thyself, of thy word. Thy word is truth, it's life and light, and a lamp unto our feet. We praise you and love you for being our God and our Father. We ask, Lord, that you will bless our government. There will be a smooth transition of uh, power and authority. Uh, we pray for peace. And uh, we pray, Lord, that um, your word, the gospel, will continue to go forth and bring forth much fruit uh, as it does. For all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, continue to lead us and guide us closer unto thyself. Uh, and all the little children that belong to you, Lord, we pray you bless and protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, you will bring an end of abortion uh, throughout the world, convicting the hearts and minds of the moms and dads, doctors and nurses, and lawmakers of their sins, of murder and abuse, and bring them to repentance. And we pray these things in thy beautiful and glorious name. Amen. <coughs> So as I mentioned, we're going to be continuing in our dialogue of the conscience. The last time I mentioned the fact that the conscience in the Latin is the word conscientia. And the word literally means with knowledge. Okay. Um, you know, the conscience has to make decisions and there has to be knowledge involved in order to make a decision. Now, in the Greek, the word is sunadesis, and uh, this literally means uh, together with, okay, reasoning together with, um, conscience, okay. <clears throat> now, I want to... Um, draw your attention to uh, this word, synodesis, and uh, it was first mentioned uh, by uh, Chrysostom in the 5th century and later developed by St. Thomas Aquinas. And uh, I'm going to read something here of of Aquinas's or relating to Aquinas's work, and that is that um, he divides it into two parts: sunadesis and conscientia. So the two words I already mentioned, the Greek and the Latin, uh, the one of which supplies the major premises and cannot error. That's the sunadesis. Is that well we're going to get there and uh, the other draws the inferences therefrom and is liable to make mistakes okay. 
So the mystics identified the synodesis as the point in the spirit of man at which it can be brought into contact and connection with the spirit of God. Now, that's pretty profound. Um, <clears throat> being brought into connection with God. Okay. Now, it used to be thought that the word conscience implied in its very structure a reference to God, meaning literally knowledge along with another. Okay, so when that first, the word was first used by the theologians, uh, it was always in reference to having knowledge with God. Okay? And God says in his word, I will write my laws in your heart, and you will know me, and I will be your God. Right. And it's talking about the conscience. Right. It's no longer needs to be, um, you know, a, a code of ethics. Because when God gives you a conscience, you know what's right and wrong. Every person brought into this world has a conscience. And that conscience is a gift from God. It will enable a person to get to know God. Romans talks about the Gentiles who didn't even have the word of God, and yet they knew God because they were obedient to their conscience, to the knowledge that they had about God. Okay, that's very important. To obey one's conscience. Now Samuel said to obey is better than sacrifice. Right? Paul, or Saul rather, did not obey his conscience. Samuel told him to wait until he got there to make the offering. And Saul went against his conscience. Okay. Uh, Cain, he knew it was wrong to murder his brother. But he went against his conscience. And he slew him. He killed him anyways. Right? Uh, the prisons are filled with people who disobeyed their conscience. They knew they shouldn't have done that, killed that person, hurt that person, robbed that person. But they did it anyways. And consequently, they're being punished because they disobeyed their conscience. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, though this derivation be uncertain, many think that it exactly expresses the truth. There are few people with an ethical experience of any depth who have not sometimes been overwhelmingly conscious, conscious, of the approval or disapproval of an unseen being. And if there be any trustworthy argument for the existence of a deity prior to supernatural revelation, this is where it is to be found. So even before you get born again, you can obey your conscience. You can, you can know God. Okay? You may not be saved, but you can know God. You can know God exists. You may not be able to have, you, you won't have a relationship with God because your sins have not been atoned for, right? Your sins have separated you from me, is what God says in his word, Isaiah. Right? There's a breach that has to be bridged, and Jesus Christ is the only bridge, the only one who can, um, <clears throat> who can, um, fill that gap in, and he did on the cross, right, for the sins of all whom the Father gave unto him. But nevertheless, you have a conscience, and it's your duty to obey it, right? Um, James says, uh, to him who knoweth to do 
right uh, but it doesn't do it to him and his sin and James 4 17 okay. um, <clears throat> you know that's talking about your conscience right you've been given this thing called the conscience Sunadesis, knowing with God. Right? Now, the scripture is black and white. Okay? It, it's black and white. You cannot change it. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. You can read it. You should read it. You can believe it. You should believe it. And the more you do, the more your conscience will be guided by God. Okay. So before I got born again, I knew God existed, but I didn't know what He expected of me. I had a conscience. I knew what was right and what was wrong. Was I able to perform what was right and what was wrong? Sometimes, but in other areas, no. When it comes to obeying God, absolutely not. Because I didn't have a relationship with God, neither do you, if you've never been born again. Right. Um, did I know it was wrong to kill another human person, a murder person? Absolutely. I knew that. That's why I didn't do it, because I'd get thrown in prison for the rest of my life. Okay. Some people choose not to obey their conscience, and they go ahead and, and go against it, and they kill people, they rape people, they hurt people, and they get thrown in prison for it, or they themselves get killed by somebody else. Okay. The more you disobey conscience, I was talking as I in last week's sermon, in, in Romans, where it talks about people who knew God, all right, but glorified him not as God okay in um, Romans chapter 1 they, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man the birds the four-footed beasts creeping they were God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. But when you disobey your conscience, you are pushing yourself farther away from God. Okay. Your conscience tells you it's wrong to get drunk because you do stupid stuff when you're drunk. When you go ahead and disobey that and go ahead and get drunk, then you, you, you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. Your conscience tells you not to do drugs or even to smoke because it's bad for you and the drugs will uh, uh, harm your your body and your mind and, even, and your conscience. They make you think uh, unreasonably about things. Okay? Somebody who's high on meth or PCP is not going to be thinking straight. So back to James 4.17 To him who knoweth to do right but doeth it not to him in his sin. When you disobey your conscience your conscience is given by God. When you disobey your conscience you are in effect disobeying God. Because your conscience is that part of you that knows right and wrong. Okay. Um, I hope you're following me where I'm going with this. Okay. Um, sorry, you have to forgive me. Those not my dogs barking. Uh, those are the neighbors. And it is somewhat annoying, but there's nothing I can do about that. So back to conscience, OK? 
obeying synodesis and the importance of obeying your conscience. Like I said, the scripture is black and white. There are some areas in life, or many areas, that are in the gray zone. You know, uh, should I, uh, for instance, the Bible doesn't say you should, thou shalt not smoke cigarettes. Doesn't say anything about it. Doesn't even say um, the word drug. It talks about alcohol. You know, uh, doesn't say thou shalt not smoke crack or marijuana or cigarette doesn't say that but what it does say is Paul says all things are lawful for me but not all things are expedient all things are permissible but I will not be brought under the bondage of anything in other words you know, back to James 4.17, him who knoweth to do right, doeth it not, him in his sin. So then it can become sinful for you to drink or smoke or do drugs. It, it will become sinful because it is not expedient to your life. Okay? Something as innocent as watching TV well, if you watch TV all day and you never read your Bible, you know you should be reading your Bible instead of watching TV, then you're sinning against your own conscience. You're sinning against God. But God is telling you you need to turn that thing off and you need to read my word. You need, you need to spend time in my word. And you're not doing that. You're sinning. To him who knoweth to do right and doeth it not, it is sin. Okay, James 4.17. We need to obey our conscience. Okay. God give it to us um, as a gift. And like I say, the gray areas in life is where the conscience really comes in handy. Right? Um, you know, such as going to a nightclub or something. It might be a temptation for some of you. Well, your conscience says that's not a good idea. But you go anyways, and then you get yourself in trouble. And you say, I knew I shouldn't have went there. I knew I shouldn't have done that. You ever said that to yourself? I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have said that. Well... You, you did it because you, you disobeyed your conscience. And you're not alone. We all have. Now that's one of the greatest problems that we have is obeying our conscience, isn't it? You know, Adam and Eve, they knew they were not to eat of that tree. They chose to disobey their conscience. Right? And when they did, look what happened. They sinned, and mankind fell because of Adam. I'm going to read you a quote here. Um, I don't know who wrote this, or who said this, but uh, it was taken during my study on the conscience. The great crisis of life arises... The great crises of life arise when conscience is issuing um, one command and self-interest or passion or authority another. The question must be decided which of the two is to be obeyed. Um, is it going to be Are you going to do the right thing? Uh, conscience <clears throat> issues one command. And conscience says go to the right. The lust of the flesh say go to the left. What are you going to do? If you go to the right, then you've obeyed conscience. You, you've obeyed God. You're obedient. If you go to the left, then you're disobeying your conscience. When you disobey your conscience, you're searing your conscience. The more you do that, the harder it is to obey your conscience. 
Now, somebody who lies all the time, they lie so much that, you know, it doesn't bother them anymore. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. This, that's a very dangerous, that's probably the most dangerous state you ever want to be in, is having a seared conscience. Because if you, if you have a seared conscience, if it's really seared, you, you just sinned against it, you know, time after time and continue, you're liable to do anything. It won't bother you. That's like serial killers. They can kill people and doesn't even bother them. They killed so many people. Cut their bodies up, you know, eat them. They just do horrendous things because their conscience is seared. They, they no longer, um, you know, they're in a state where they, they burned it so bad they, they can't obey it anymore. They, they've refused to obey it for so long, time after time. They're, they're in a state of disobedience. You know, and only God can break that and break into a person's conscience you know, and give them a sensitive conscience once again. You know. Um when the will stands at the parting of the ways, seeing clearly before it the right course and the wrong, conscience commands to strike into the one and forbid to choose the other. Okay. So conscience and will, um, you know, they are brother and sister. The conscience being, being the judge, so to speak, the will being the executioner um, of the judgment. Okay. Let me see if I can find in my notes here. Conscience in no way withdraws my life. We may fail to obey, giving way to passion or being overborne by the allurements of temptation, but we know what we ought to obey. It is our duty, and this is a sublime and sacred word. Okay. Um, you know, they're different categories of conscience that they, in the school of philosophy. I'm not going to go into all those, but um, I figured I'd take a few excerpts uh, from uh, these categories. One is of the social category, and uh, let me just read this for you. Not only does a man's own conscience pass sentence on his conduct, but the consciences of others pass sentence on it too. And this may be due to a great intensification of the consequent sensations. Thus a crime may lie hidden in the memory, and the pain of its guilt may be assuaged by the action of time, when suddenly and unexpectedly it is found out and exposed to the knowledge of all, and only when the force of the public conscience breaks forth on the culprit, driving him from society, does he feel his guilt in all his magnitude? So in other words, you can run from your conscience. Some people do their whole life. They just keep running from it. They know what's right. They know uh, what they should be doing, but they don't. They know the day of judgment is coming, you know, but they don't prepare themselves. They just blow it on worldliness. On chasing the things of the world. You know, Noah, it took him a hundred years to build that ark. And I'm sure the people were wondering, 
questioning him throughout those hundred years, why are you building this? And he would tell them because God is going to destroy the earth. Were they listening to him? Would they help him build? No, they didn't. Because they didn't believe him. Right? They didn't take him seriously. And then, you know, when it was time, uh, when the day of judgment arrived and God broke the heavens open and the earth open and the earth began flooding, Noah was already in the boat when the, the door was shut. Animals were in there with him. He was ready to go. But the rest of the world was not. Okay? As in the days of Noah, they were making merry, giving in marriage, making merry. He, the same, as Jesus said, it, the same will happen in the, the day of the return of, of God, the Son of God. Okay? People are going to be taken off guard. They didn't prepare their souls. They were fools. They were the five foolish virgins. Said we got time. No, you don't. Okay. Martin Luther, the great reformer, he said it is neither safe nor right to disobey conscience, and he was right. right. We know what's right and what's wrong, and uh, when we refuse, when we refuse to do it, that's sin. And we need to obey our conscience. It's there, and our conscience is a gift from God. We need to obey it. Okay? And stop running uh, from it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, David had a very sensitive conscience. And yes, he did the wrong thing. He committed adultery. And he put Uriah on the front line. Had him killed. But... You know, he repented. You know, he shouldn't have done it. And he suffered a great consequence of it. He lost the kingdom because of it. His children turned on him. His first child from Bathsheba died. You know, he lost a great deal because of that one bad decision. All it takes is one poor decision. And it can affect the rest of your life. We really need to be careful about the decisions we make. You know, because it years can be wasted you, know, you can suffer for many years because of one single bad decision you need to be very careful about the decisions uh, that we make and pray about them consult with God and when God tells you and he will he'll speak to your conscience like he did to Elijah the still small voice you know, he wasn't in the whirlwind he wasn't in the fire he wasn't in the earthquake he, he was in the still small voice and I believe that's that's the conscience right the scripture says go this way and you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way go ye in it right trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not unto your own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him he'll make thy path straight you will know the right way the Holy Spirit it says in the scripture, Jesus said, I'll give the Holy Spirit, and you will need no man to teach you. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. So before you were a Christian, you, you had a conscience, but you didn't know God. And so all your decisions were sinful. But once you became a Christian, right, once the Holy Spirit came into your heart, into your life, then suddenly you were able to, not only to obey your conscience, but to obey God. Right? Because in obeying your conscience, you are, you are now obeying God. Right? Because God is writing His laws in your heart. Okay? He only does that for His children. Um, so... You know, there is a remorse when Judas had a conscience. Okay, Judas betrayed Christ. And after he betrayed him, he said, I betrayed innocent blood. His conscience condemned him. Right? His conscience condemned him. He took the 30 pieces of silver back to the high priest. He said, I don't want this. And they said, we don't want it either. 
and he threw it on the temple floor. And then he went and hanged himself because his conscience bothered him so much. He knew he had done the wrong thing, but he wasn't willing to repent. In fact, he couldn't repent because he wasn't chosen by God to repent. So many people have constant guilt. You know, people pay thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to deal with the guilt in their conscience. You know, people say, well, I don't, I don't even believe in sin. Well, that eliminates guilt, doesn't it? If there is no such thing as sin, then why, what could I be guilty of? Nothing. You know, there's no crime ever committed. Well, that's wrong. Because there is such a thing as sin. And it's the transgression of God's word. And every time you do that, you're sinning against God and you get a guilty conscience. And you have to deal with that, with that guilt. And how we are to deal with it is through confession to God and repentance of the sin. Okay. And that will, uh, that will remove the guilt and shame. Excuse me. So the conscience is its like a very valuable gem. It's like a child, as I spoke last week. You know, a child's mind is formed and shaped by the things that he or she learns from his parents and watches them do. Okay. Um, So the conscience especially has a remorse of an evil, uh, has a remorse of an evil conscience impressed the human imagination. Cain, Judas, Saul, Herod, the poet, you know, uh, Pontius Pilate, he had Jesus Christ standing in front of him and, and, uh, and uh, he, he says, uh, what, what is truth? Right? Well, the truth was standing right in front of him. And he knew it to some degree. He had to have. And his conscience was telling him to let Jesus go. Because he was an innocent man. But did he let him go? No. He chose to disobey his conscience. Uh, Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, it says uh, they came before the church, Peter and the church, and said, this is what we gave. This is the amount we sold our land for. And both of them fell down and died because they lied. They were lying to the apostles. They were lying to the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't the amount that they sold. They were holding back. Okay. Um, there are many instances in Scripture where uh, people disobeyed conscience. First Kings 13, you know, the prophet told by God you know, to go and, and uh, preach uh, and then to leave and to, to go back, to get out of there and not to stay. Why well, he didn't, he stayed and he ended up losing his life because he disobeyed his conscience. He knew the right thing to do and he didn't do it. To him who knoweth right and doeth it not, it is sin. Okay. So, we need to obey the conscience. We need to have a, a clean conscience uh, and not a, um, not a guilty, not, or not, not a defiled uh, conscience. Okay, we want to have a, uh, a clean conscience. And that's what I'm going to look at here next. Is this uh, word uh, okay for clean and having a uh, clean conscience? I find it here in my my notes.
Okay. So, when I look at the word asunodesis, okay, and um, this. So synodesis, the conscience of anything, um, the soul as distinguished between what is morally good and bad, prompting to do the former and shun the latter, commending the one and condemning the other. Okay, so have a, uh, a clean conscience, um, find this here, that's the goal, is to have a, uh, to have a clean um, conscience, and uh, as I said last time, the Hebrew word, of course, for conscience is leib, L-E-B, and it means heart or inner man. The um, clean conscience. I'll find it here for you. Catharos is the word. Have a clean, pure, unstained, literal, either literally or ceremonially or spiritually, guiltless, innocent, upright. Catharos, okay, primitive word, properly without admixture. What is separated, purged, hence clean, pure, because unmixed, without undesirable elements, spiritually clean and purged, purified by God, free from the contaminated, soiling influences of sin. Catharos, that's what we want. Pardon me, I'm going to turn a little light on here. That's the goal, is to have a clean conscience before God and men. Okay. Um, now the scripture says... Um, that um, okay that if our conscience condemn us in um, John first John 3:20 it's an interesting passage here and it's worth taking a look at um, okay, so my little children, he says, hereby know we that we are of the truth and shall stir our hearts before him. For if our heart, our conscience, condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Okay, now, if our heart condemn us, okay, God is greater than our hearts. Okay, um, pull this up. In 
here the word is uh, cardia. He says if our heart, and God is greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. If our heart, or in this case our conscience, because you know your heart doesn't think, it's your conscience, your mind that thinks. It's your mind that condemns you. If your mind or conscience condemn you not, then we have confidence towards God. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. So, <clears throat> to sum this up, uh, your conscience, you need to obey your conscience. So long as your conscience is being governed by the Word of God, you're being led by the Spirit of God, and God will show you the right thing to do. Right? You'll know in your heart the right thing to do, because it will be in accordance and in alignment with God's Word. Okay? You know, somebody who hoards, you know, that's obviously not right. They know it's not right, but they continue to hoard, and that's sin. Somebody who watches pornography, you know that's not right. Yet you do it anyways. That's sin. You get drunk or do drugs or you, you know, you're a habitual liar. You know that's not right, yet you persist. It's sin. Okay. At some point you need to confess it, repent of it, turn away from it, and get a clean conscience. Right. If our heart condemns us not, we have confidence towards God. The reason you're not getting what you ask for is because you're trying to consume it upon your lust, as James says. You ask and you have not, because you're asking to consume it on your lust. Okay, so the more you read of God's Word, the better conscience you'll have. And you'll be able to obey your conscience. Now, when you need help, then you ask God. You know... When you know the right thing to do and you're having, having trouble doing it, then you pray for strength from God. And you get back into His Word. Right? And He'll carry you through it. And trust me, He's a consuming fire. And He loves His children. He'll discipline us when He has to. Um, but He sees our conscience. He knows when we're trying to obey, when we're trying to do the right thing. He sees all that. See? But when we go against it, He sees that too. And He will certainly chasten us. So I hope this has helped you in your understanding of the conscience and the, um, the uh, importance of obeying it and, um, and making sure that it is obeying God's Word. Okay? When you do, you'll be blessed. When you obey it, when you don't, then you're going to suffer um, the penalty for not obeying it. Right? May God bless us in our obeying of our conscience to the glory of God. We've been created in His image and likeness, and the more we obey Him, the more we obey our conscience, the more Christ-like we become. Amen? God bless you.